Yeah, if it ends in epsilon or iota or rho, this is better. If the stem ends with this, uh, uh, this alphabet, that is epsilon or iota or rho, automatically they fall under your alpha. And uh, if they end in C, C or omic or sigma, if they end with this sigma, C or sigma, automatically they fall under this. Remember. Could you write a little bigger, sir? We can't see. It's tiny. Oh. We are okay. not able to see. What? All right. Yeah. If the stem ends with this alphabet, epsilon, this one, or iota. or raw automatically it falls under pure alpha so you know that this is in your notebook and if it ends with c c or sigma Sigma. Automatically, that comes here. Remember, the ending of the noun is alpha. And uh, you have to check whether this noun is under pure alpha or is under mix. So the criteria for finding the pure alpha and the uh, and the mix is this. This is for pure alpha. If the stain ends with epsilon or iota or rho, automatically it comes under pure alpha. But if it ends with C or a sigma, automatically it comes under mix. But the ending automatically is this. So you will have to check whether it is mixed or pure alpha by the alphabet that ends the stain. So they have been given. So I don't think you have a problem there again. And uh, I want us to, to go to the accents. accents. Okay, sir. Thank you. I wanted us to finish this uh, lesson. Okay. In the first place, especially on the side of the verbs, we saw that the accents were recessive. Recessive, which means they move freely on the ultima, uh, penalt, and uh, and penalt. They, they are flexible. That is, they can move on the three, um, on the three syllables. That is the ultima, the penalt, and the, the and penalt. But when we come to, especially if you observe on page 45, when we come to nouns, when we come to nouns, it is not so. I'm just trying to summarize, it is not so. You'll find that in nouns, 
when you divide them in syllables, the accent uh, will remain or it will be retained on where it was, especially when you check in the lexica, that is the, the Greek dictionary. You have to check with the Greek dictionary where the accent of a noun is. And it is retained on that syllable on which it was in the in the Greek dictionary. So you need to note that. We'll read more on page 45. We'll read more on page 45. And uh, if you will have any problem, when we always begin a lesson, if you have a question, please ask so that I can explain. Now, when we finish our lesson, that is uh, lesson two, we did not actually touch on the questions. And I hope you understand the questions. And uh, please, I need you to do them. And uh, I'll, we now have time because we'll be meeting on Tuesday, on Wednesday, and on Thursdays. So you will be set free on Friday, Saturday, Sunday and a Monday, so that you can have time to, to do your, you can have time to do your, your assignment. And uh, that time that I think is um, it's quite good. Uh, this was uh, proposed by Levy, and I trust if we go by that, I think it will be fine. So let me just read. Maybe I go through what I think is needed in the questions on page 46. Hello. Hello. Hello, Dina? sir. Yes, sir. On page 46, practice and review. Yes, sir exercises lesson three we need to practice writing the declension of pure alpha pure eta and mixed we need to practice you need to practice that and how can you do it i have given the nouns that you can practice with and it's not only that you can also go to the uh, to the vocabulary that we covered and uh, try to decline the, the nouns there, and that will give you a good practice of knowing how to differentiate pure alpha, pure eta, and mix. Uh, I'll not put you on a tight schedule, maybe you'll be sending in your assignment ever after a fortnight, please. So please try that. And then we have the translations from Greek, English. And uh, as I told you, how do you go about it? First of all, the vocabulary is given there always you will find them in the in the in the vocabulary at the beginning of the lesson or in the lexicon behind your book or your notes we have uh, greek to english vocabularies. 
So you can be checking in both of these. And this begins on page 81. These are the vocabularies. Most of the vocabularies of the Greek language. And uh, particularly those which you have been assigned at the beginning of the, of the, of the lesson. When you see those vocabularies, remember, they are going to occur often in the lesson you are learning. So you don't hear them. Only the difference will be the, the changing, hmm? the changing of the ending of the noun as we have learned. You need to observe the noun and see where is the stem and what is the ending. When you know the stem and when you know the ending, then you can know whether it is um, you can know whether it is in nominative, especially uh, in the noun, nominative, genitive. Uh, dative, um, accusative, or <clears throat> vocative. Those are the cases. So the vocabulary only changes, uh, of now only changes where, towards the end, that is in the ending. But the word itself is not affected. So, that is how you can do. And uh, if it is, uh, they be uh, verbs, also you check the endings, the, 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 the ending of the verbs. And uh, you'll know whether it is first person, second person, or third person uh, singular, or first person, second person, and third person. Uh, so that is what you need to do. And then we have translate from English to Greek. Please have given very few questions on that just for your practice. Now, what I want to lay down now is for us to go through the vocabulary of lesson four, and then we wind up the lesson for today. So that when we come tomorrow, we'll continue with the rest of the, the lesson. Yeah, uh, I think tomorrow also we will cover lesson four. And uh, I told you, we need to be on our toes now. Chapter one and chapter two, uh, lesson one and lesson two, I had to go slowly because uh, it's the beginning of the course. But now uh, I'll go marathon. Uh, unless otherwise there is uh, something I'll be explaining. So in lesson four, lesson four, lesson four, we have the vocabularies uh, that is on page 48. I need just to read through and then after we can wind up the lesson. So we have on the left, the word or the noun. Adelphos. Remember, here we are going to get most of the vocabulary are masculine, not feminine. They are masculine and they are in the second declension. Second declension. Remember, we dealt with uh, first declension, which actually most of the nouns were uh, feminine. And here, most of the nouns 
will be must play. So Adele Falls, you can see the article there is hope. And then the meaning of Adele Falls is brother. Remember, sister is Adelphe. Sister is Adelphe. And the brother is Adelphos. Okay. And then the word Allah, that is not uh, a noun, it is a conjunction, which means but Allah, but. And then we have. Anthropos, anthropos, which means man or human being. Man or human being. Or person. Anthropos may mean man, human being, person. And then we have another conjunction down there. Day, 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 day means but or and, but or and. Please separate the two words. Separate the two words there. And then we have do loss, do loss. The loss means slave. The loss means slave, or it means southern. So this is in two categories. Okay, a southern is a hired uh, worker, and uh, a slave is maybe someone who has maybe brought to the house and made the slave of that house. So it has those two meanings, slave and servant. And then we have ergon, ergon, ergon. You can see the article there is top. The article there is top. And this shows you that argon is a neuter noun, neuter noun, and it refers to what? Deed or work. Deed or work. And then we have Danatos. 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 Danatos means death. Danatos mean death. And then we have the Theos. 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 Theos means God. Theos means God. Uh, or God with a small letter. If we are referring to God, our creator, always it will have a title, a definite article. And if we are referring to a small God, we will use indefinite article, which means an or a. An or a for small God. And then uh, God, with a definite article, has a reference to God, our creator. And then we have curious. Curious. Curious means Lord, master, and owner. Lord, master, and owner. And then we have the word logos, logos, logos. Logos is masculine 
and it refers to y y remember what is written in john chapter one verse one in the beginning was the word and the word was god and the word was god so logos we normally use that word logos and then nomos or nomos nomos means law law then we have oikos 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 means house house oikos house and then we have ouranos 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 means heaven or sky ouranos means heaven or sky and then we have uh, the word techno 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 and you can see techno is a neuter because of the article to is neuter and it refers to child child as i stated in the lesson a child is a neuter noun why because she has not been identified whether she is male or female so we refer to child as a what as neuter because it is neuter we don't know until we identify the kind of child he is the child a boy or is the child a, a girl and then we have huyos 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 i'm using h letter h who yours who yours or who yours this means stand stand so i hope these are some of the masculine nouns that we are going to meet mostly in this lesson four any question please hello linas hello sir hello. hello yes i'm getting you hello yes sir can you get me hello now what i need you to not from the vocabulary above is that deck is referred to as a postpositive as a postpositive why because it never comes past in its clause it never come past in its clause. It comes second or later. Comes second or later in the sentence or, or in its clause. And uh, you'll find that in English, de, which means but or and, usually begins the clause and he said that is not the same with the Greek 
will not be here. It will not be the first one in it close. Must come second or the third. So that is what I need you to know. And uh, tomorrow we are going to cover the second declension nouns. And then we will come to the typical second declension forms where we will see the declension of the word logos, which is word, and then Adelphos, which is brother, and ergon, work, and techno, child. So we see logos and uh, Adelphos, they are masculine now. And uh, ergon and techno, they are neuter nouns. They are neuter nouns. We will also look at how they are accent, accented, the accenting of the second declension nouns. This is the shortest uh, lesson we will have tomorrow. And then we may proceed also to lesson five. So it's not long before we come to an end of this first one. Linus, hello. Yes, sir. Hello. Brother Linus. Yes, sir. I'm getting you. Can you get me? Hello. 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 Hello, sir. Can you get me? Hello, Wilson. A quick. Are you there? Yes. Hello, Wilson. Hello, sir. Hello, Lina. Yes, sir. Can Lina? you? Yes, I'm getting five or five. Hello. Hello. Okay, we come to the end of our class today, which, and I hope to meet you tomorrow. tomorrow. You are welcome. Yes. Okay, so thank you very much. Hello, Jack. Hello, Jack. 